Hi everyone, my name is Claire from Pressure Point Sports Massage Training Centre. I'm producing a series of videos uh, for injury, anatomy and sports massage. Uh, I'm based here in Arnold, Nottingham and I have online and face-to-face -face courses. So really these videos are here to inspire you, to help you learn, to teach you some anatomy, whether you're a student, a beginner or you've been doing it a while, some new techniques hopefully. So I hope you enjoy them please press subscribe. I'm going to be doing weekly content and uploading and I don't want you to miss out. So hope to see you soon. Thank you. This video is going to be showing you how to do an upper back massage. So we're going to use some body massage techniques. We're going to use some sports massage techniques. We're going to work around and look at rotator cuff, the upper traps. I'm only working down to here. So I'm not doing it as a full back massage. Um, and further videos that I'll be recording, we'll be doing lumbar as a, a separate video so you can link the two together. So to start off with, I'm just gonna have my hands on the client over towel and I just have a little compression down the spine. Not leaning too much, but it just lets you feel the spine mobility. If you do this, and I'm not intending to at all to get any form of cracking, but if it does crack, it's because it wants to. It's nothing to be scared of. It's just a nice little release. So just have a little feel that way. It also gets your client used to touch as well before the start of the treatment. Okay, so I'm going to take the towel down just to about here, cover the lumbar up. Warm the lotion up first. Um, I like using Naki lotion, Naki sports massage lotion. Yeah, I was trained with massage oil, it was almond oil about 25 years ago. Um, but with nut allergies now, I tend to avoid any use of nut products. So I do have some water dispersible oil, um, which is soya. But the Naki lotion is really good and also it doesn't leave the skin too slippy at the end it does mean that you do have to reapply it and depending on the skin type some clients you have to reapply in the first few minutes so just be aware of that okay i do have my little holster here so i don't have to leave right so that is just me applying the lotion i'm not really doing any specific techniques yet but my first technique is called a reverse effleurage so I go down either side of the spine, come back across the shoulders because it's good to include the upper arms, fingers down on the traps and then come right up to the top of the neck here and press on the occipital area. So it should be um, fairly slow speed and leaning into the techniques. So this technique does feel really good it's a really good way to relax the client before you start so in terms of timings people always ask me how many I can't really answer that it's as it feels but you know 8 9 10 11 12 would feel really good once you start to feel a bit of warmth coming through and you see some redness so the reddening that you see appearing is called erythema and that's the blood vessels opening up and supplying the muscles with oxygen. So reverse effleurage to start. Then we can get a little bit deeper. We can walk around the couch. Just going to get a touch more lotion. So we're going to do some kneading here around the trapezius muscle, which is pretty big. So do you know where the trapezius attaches? We go up here from the occipital bone, down the neck. This is trapezius, right down to the AC joint, comes along the spine and the scapula, across here, all the way down to T12. So all these techniques here are based really on the trapezius, with some deltoid on the side. I tend to focus on one side first. Um, so we can stay on one side of the couch and then we'll be moving around to the other shoulder. Get that nice and warm. So this is petrosage, which is a kneading technique. 
And then we can go to uh, palmer kneading. Palmer kneading, we pull up and we squeeze down. Pull up, squeeze down. I tend to use the opposite hand because my thumb sticks out and it catches on the neck here. So I go with the opposite hand to the shoulder. Now around this part of the body, the scapula has got some real bony bits on it. And there's a bit here called the spine and the scapula, which if you're not sure about anatomy underneath, we don't want to confuse that with a knot. So that area is something to avoid actually massaging over with deep techniques because it can cause bruising and actually be painful for your client. So warming up right shoulder. Try and get all your techniques flowing. There shouldn't really be a point where you're stood not doing massage. And if you're there and if you're just learning techniques and you can't remember what to do, effleurage feels confident. It feels great while you're thinking of what to do next. So the client shouldn't ever be thinking where have they gone or what they're doing. Just keep working, keep warming up the tissues. Okay. I'm going to come around, do the same on the other side. Just walk around this way. So working on the upper or upper and middle fibers of the traps. There are three different sections to this muscle. Upper traps are up here for neck extension and shoulder elevation. We've got the middle fibres of the traps for shoulder retraction. And then the lower fibres of the traps are the ones that are often weaker, um, which are just down here. It's a bit harder to work on those in terms of strength work. Right, so we're starting to get some reddening going on. Just going to apply a little bit more lotion there. And once those shoulders feel quite equal, I'm going to come round to the head of the couch and uh, just work a little bit more into the upper traps. Come around this way. Let's do another effleurage, a couple of these. I'm going to use a technique called effleurage du point. So I use my fists to get into the upper traps, but you've got to be aware doing this. I was talking about the bony structures. There's a point here in the shoulder. If you just come and have a look. Okay, that is bone. So when we do this technique, we don't want to be crunching over that bony tissue. We want to come to here. I call it the V. It's where the spine and the scapula and the clavicle form this V shape. So if we watch here, I use my body weight to press, push my elbows, pushes my fists into the traps. And I only go out to that point. Lean on. So it's only a short technique, but it is in that point where a lot of people get tension. If you ask anyone where their problems are, they'll always point to this position here. So we'll just get into that. I'm going to then turn my hands round and I'm going to work either side of the spine. I connect with my thumb like so, so I've got a gap, and that gap is for all the spinous processes. So I'm leaning on. I've got a low couch here, so I'm fairly tall, but for upper back massage, I like having the couch nice and low. So I'd like straight wrists, straight elbows, and leaning your body weight on. If the couch is too high, you'll probably look like this, and you're not going to get the pressure. So it's a lean through. And you can see the knuckle marks I'm leaving, which is perfectly normal but it is showing the pressure starting to get a bit firmer. From here, I can go a little bit deeper and use my elbow or forearm. Let's go forearm first, so a little bit flatter here. And I'm just working over the lower traps. I'm going into a rectus by now. But be careful, the point of your elbow isn't on the spinous processes because that would leave bruises and be pretty painful. 
if you want to go a little bit deeper i cup my elbow like so and now i'm leaning in okay if you pull your arm up it's more of a point and that will be <coughs> a bit more pressure there but control as you work down It's hard when you demonstrate techniques because they all have individual names, but when you go from one technique to another, it's just about using movement and blending all these techniques in. So what I'm doing now, I've got no idea what it's called, but I'm just using both my hands just to get that reddening. I suppose it's a double effleurage or so, but the point is you've got to just put your own style onto these techniques and just work to warm the the muscle tissue up so we can see that side now getting a little bit more redder that erythema and i'm going to go to the other side okay so i'm going to start off with more of the forearm as i say we try and keep two hands on your client rather than leaning like so two hands on you can use the other one to guide you if you want so it feels quite tight here so i'm going to get in with an elbow i'm going to use my hand to cup the elbow and then lean on for a bit more pressure In terms of pressure, you could be asking your client now. I would say the thing not to ask is, is the pressure okay? Because the moment you say, is the pressure okay? Your client politely says yes. Whether they want more or not, we tend to be a bit too polite. So we could say, can I go a bit deeper? If you say, can I go a bit deeper? You either get no, which shows you on the right level. You could do a bit apprehensive or yes please shows you're not really working at the right level so that's one question to ask or you could use the pressure scale of one to ten where ten is unbearable and an eight is an uncomfortable but effective technique so it's different questions but try and stay away from is it okay so we can see now the hemisphere coming through on both sides it's looking nice and warm Flowage back over the top. Now, upper back massage is really good combined later with lower back massage, but also I would normally start this with a neck and chest massage with the client supine, and I would move on to this technique. So I'm just trying to break it down a little bit. So make sure before you do this one, you have a look at the neck and chest videos. But we can also do a little bit of work here on the back of the neck or the upper traps. We're using a ringing technique, kneading technique on the back here. Okay, just to get the upper traps. If they've got long hair, this technique tends to ravel the hair up. So I would do that, keep the hair out of the way, and then with your other hand, work on the back of the neck. With short hair, perfect, you can get both hands in. So we're doing well here, get some warmth, got quite a lot of red around this rhomboid traps area. But as you can see, haven't really done much on the back of the shoulder blade or the scapula. I did mention earlier about the bony landmarks. So let's look at how to avoid those and work on the rotator cuff. And work on this arm first so from this position you can get in with kneading now specifically on the back of the scapula and if you're not sure about anatomy i'm going to do some videos on the scapular anatomy bony landmarks and muscle insertion and origin so it's it's done by drawing on the body which makes it really 
visual, uh, which is a great way of learning about muscles. If you look at a textbook, it's very 2D. It's quite hard to learn it. So check those out because uh, they've got some great feedback. Right, so now we're <coughs> using effleurage du poids. We're working on a muscle called the infraspinatus. Infraspinatus lies below the spine in the scapula. Don't go too high up because then you're working directly on that bony part. So stay below it. You can support your wrist. You can have your hand on your client. And we're going to go from the bottom point here of the scapula. Okay, so start there. And all your techniques are going to end up at that mid-shoulder joint. Okay, just to there. Okay, we can make that a little bit deeper. You can use reinforced thumbs, one thumb on top of the other, and work down this way. You should never just use one thumb on its own because of the stress on the thumb joint. So reinforce, or you can use knuckles like so. Or depending on the size of your client, we could get a controlled elbow in there as well. So Martin, my athlete, he can cope with an elbow in his infraspinatus, but you've got to just watch the pressure and throughout get feedback. Remember, what question don't we ask a client? Is it okay? Okay, I could say, can I go a bit deeper or ask him the one to 10 pressure scale. So now we're starting to get some reddening in that area. Infraspinatus is one of our four rotator cuff muscles. Do you know the other three? can hear you all shouting no well so I'll tell you what the other three are the other three are supraspinatus on the top here above the spine we've got a teres minor along the side and underneath which is between the rib cage and the scapula is the subscapularis again there'll be videos on looking at those individually so with our erythema now we're going to do a technique called lengthening so with this technique, I'm going to guide my client to the rotation that I want them to do. And then it leaves you with two hands to do the technique. So with my client here who knows what he's doing, we're going to take his hand up into a lateral rotation and then just guide them through the movement. You don't need to explain what you're doing. That's the speed here. So you're going to work at that speed. And when your client does that, you're going to be working and using a technique called lengthening. So from there, we're going to do this effleurage du poids technique. So the client's lengthening the muscle at the same time as you're applying a lengthening technique onto it. And I would do that maybe four, five, six times. It starts to encourage movement in the shoulder joint. And it's also nice to get the client involved in the treatment. We don't want them falling asleep in a sports massage. That's brilliant. Okay, just relax there. So that's infraspinatus. I'm going to do a little bit on supraspinatus. So I've got to come to the head of the couch for this one. Just going to work my way around. Okay, supraspinatus is over on top of this bony landmark called the spine and the scapula. So where you find that and you come into the top bit, you drop into that supraspinatus and I mentioned before about the V so there's it's only a small area you can work on so we start by <coughs> using effleurage du poing we can go a little bit deeper with reinforced thumbs but if you start too close to the neck you will get a point where it flicks over the um, traps the levator scapula, there'll be a point which just flicks and it's quite tender. So I'm going to start there, reinforce my thumb, and I'm just going to slide out to what I call the V, which is near the AC joint, the, the chromioclavicular joint. Okay, depending on the size of the client, and if you feel confident with it, you can get a controlled elbow, but just be careful. 
Um, so yeah, if they've got good solid traps on here, but if they're quite lean, I would stay away from the elbow in this body part. So this arm's nice and warm, erythema. You'd combine this possibly with an upper arm massage. I'm going to stay on this shoulder and just show you a little bit of mobility around here and working on uh, stretching the rhomboids. It depends on the client's flexibility. So I'm going to start off with the arm next to the body here, nice and relaxed. And already, whether you can see from the video, this part sticks out a little bit more. It's just relax that joint. So from there, I'm going to come around, place my hand under the shoulder, get the client to relax. If they help you out, all the muscles start to tense up. Okay, now from here, I'm going to place my fingers on this medial border. Okay, place the fingers there. I'm going to lift the client's shoulder up into my fingers, like so. And at the same time, I'm going to draw a line around that medial border to the top and stretch down. Lift up, stretch down, lift up. So it's quite a timing technique to do. But you can actually feel how the shoulder wants to move. That's good. Now, if you've got a spare towel, you could then use your towel for the next little bit. We're going to place the client's hand here uh, with my client on the couch. Doesn't particularly need one because the medial border is now protruding a little bit, which is great. But if you had a spare towel, you could roll it up, place it under the shoulder joint, and you would see that that actually makes it come out a little bit more. So I want to be working around this medial border. I'm going to come round to the head of the couch. And going with my F large du pas. Now I do need to point out something particular here. So I mentioned the traps earlier that comes across. It cuts across the medial border in half. And if I can show you, can you see that? You see that flick in there? That flick in is going over the edge of the trapezius, which attaches down to T12. So if you're using really deep techniques, whether it's elbow or frictions, that is really going to be aggravating for your client. So we use big surface for this one. Or if you want to get a little bit deeper, you change the position you're working. So you can work above on the traps and then we can work below but don't flick over that area. It is a common area for some massage therapists, depending on their training, to think they found a knot and they spend 10 minutes trying to get the knot out. Really, what are they doing? They're trying to get massage out the edge of the trapezius, which isn't very useful. So, lovely and warm erythema reddening from here. I'm going to do some compressions. Compressions, I'm going thumb on thumb, here to here, and then I just try and sink my thumb and my body weight here into the edge of the scapula. So we've got rhomboids, we've got traps, okay, a bit of subscap underneath there. So it's just trying to open up that area, the scapulothoracic joint. As we get higher, because of the traps coming over the top, you won't be able to get underneath because it holds it down more. So just try and get into there if you can. And there'll be some clients which you can't. Uh, we could finish with a bit of a stretch, whether I can get it or not for the video here. Really, really short nails for this. Any nails at all that you've got, your client will feel it in this position. So you hook on and you pull that edge of the scapula towards you. Okay, so there's not a massive amount of movement. And if you find you're slipping, you can stick a towel or some couch tissue over the top and then that gives you better grip. There's not a lot of movement here. Some will move quite a lot and some you won't even be able to get onto. So I'm going to put the arm back down. 
effleurage over the top. And I would repeat all of those techniques on this arm. Once I've done that, I would then join the whole back up and start with my initial techniques. So you can see how long a, a upper back massage can take, even without including lumbar or neck or chest. So you've got a good, probably 20, 25 minutes, 30 minutes um, on the upper back. But combine it with the other body parts. Always finish with your effleurage techniques. Go up the back of the neck press and as I've said in previous videos it's great to finish with a technique where the client knows you've finished don't just do a technique and finish like so you're going to go at the back of the neck and press and then what I tend to do is cover them up this also absorbs a little bit of the lotion just rock the spine a little bit start with what we've um, finished with what we started so I just feel that mobility you might find a little bit more bounce now everything's relaxed a bit okay and however you want to finish yeah, they definitely know that's the end of the treatment